Okay, hello. This afternoon I am going to calculate a somewhat more difficult integral. The one behind me on the screen. And I'm going to do this by integration by parts. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay, so I have here written the product rule for differentiation. All right, now if I were to rearrange this, I would subtract uh, u dv on dx from both sides. Okay, like that. And then um, I would think temporarily of these as fractions, even though they are not fractions. And I would think, well, if these, if these were fractions, I would multiply throughout by dx. And I would get this, right? But all that does is help me to remember the rule um, of integration by parts. Okay, that is that I can replace v du with duv minus u dv. So that's what you want to do first. Okay, so we'll copy out this integral. And uh, so we say let. So you see, we want to. Um, we want to replace this. Uh, with something like this. Okay, we want to replace this with this in here. Now in order to do that, uh, we need to express one of these products or multiplicands, one of these as a derivative. All right, now if you do that with x squared, well, it's not very helpful. Um, it doesn't simplify. So what you do is you look for the multiplicand, one of these two, such that when you take its derivative, and possibly its derivative again, you come back to the original thing you had. So let me be more specific with this. Now, the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. The derivative of cos of x is minus sine of x. Now, sine of x and minus sine of x they're almost the same, right? They're different by a minus one. So for that reason, we want to choose sine of x and view that as a derivative. Okay, so let's begin and say that this is now. I need to open up the palettes because I'm typing and I want to find something that looks like a fraction. Okay, so I can use that, copy, paste, get rid of the palettes. And now, see, I want d on dx. Now, if I take cos of x right there, the derivative of cos is minus sine, right? So I don't quite want um, cos of x, but if I put a minus front sign in front, then that is true. The derivative of cos is minus sine, so these two are equal. Alrighty, so let's move this up to the top. And now, think for a moment. If these were fractions, you would be able to cancel the dx. But they are not fractions. Um, okay, so that means that we just get a hint as to uh, what rule. So we can eliminate the dx, and that says that we are integrating x squared with respect to this cos of x. Okay, now we need to associate this with one of these. So it suggests that we ought to let u be equal to cos of x. Okay, so now we can come down here and say, well, let's just write it in the comment that we already have set up, let u equal cos of x. Okay, and we let v be equal to x squared. All right, now that we have that, uh, we can simplify this a little bit more. Okay, so this is our this is our u. This is our v. All right, I want to put a bracket around all of this because of the minus sign. 
And uh, it's the rule up here says that we can replace this with the integral of one with respect to the product of x squared and cos x and then minus uh, the swap around. Okay, so we've got to swap this around now. As in put the cos of x out here and the x squared in after the d. All right. So now notice this bracket goes all the way around the whole thing because we've replaced v du with this difference, just as we're permitted to do by integration by parts. Okay, now that we have that part done, we can uh, simplify. All right, because the integral of one with respect to, say, the letter y is just y. Okay, so this first integral here on the left is just x squared cos of x. All right, and now we can expand the minus one, distribute that over the bracket. So that becomes minus x squared cos of x and then minus times minus is plus. All right, and we come down to this line. Okay, copy this, come down and simplify this some more. Now, this, this cos of x dx squared is not exactly ready for us to complete. So we need to go one step further and introduce a derivative, okay? So we can make a substitution. Now I need to open up a palette, basic math assistant. Okay, and I'm after the fraction. All right, and now I put dx, and then I put this dx there, so that if these were fractions, the dx would cancel. They're not fractions. We have to say this every time we bring up fractions. They're not fractions, but uh, the rules work very much in a similar way. Okay, so the rules of integration say that we can do this. And now, look, we have a derivative of x squared with respect to x. Okay, so we can come down here and simplify that derivative. All right, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. So we can change this into 2x. And now what we have is 2x cos of x, and that's to be integrated. Okay, so why don't we now, in another step of simplification, bring this 2 out the front. Okay, we're permitted to do that. And I can put this x before the cos x because they're just multiplying together and multi multiplication is commutative for these. Okay, so now this is a little bit of a simpler integral than uh, the one we started with. So what we do now is we just apply the same process. Uh, we, we turn cos of x into a derivative and sort of repeat the process. Okay, so that's what we'll do next. I'll copy this, paste. And now I want to observe that uh, cos of x is the derivative of sine of x. So I'll come up here and copy this, paste it right here, and I'll put sine. All right, so the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, so this is true. Okay, and now that I have that, I can uh, get rid of these dx's, okay, and then I can go back and consider this rule right here. So I'll come down and I'll copy it again, paste it right here, okay, um, and so we have x d sine of x. Now I want to view sine of x as u, okay, so let's say let u be equal to sine of x and v be equal to x. Okay, so now we can apply that rule integration by parts. Uh, and it says 
Now look, we've got a two in front multiplying by this integral. So for that reason, I know I'm going to end up with a difference here. I'll put in a bracket. Okay, so the applying the rule means that we have the integral of one with respect to x sine of x. And then we subtract what happens when we swap this around. Okay, so I'll come up here and copy, paste, and then I put um, x there and sine of x here. Okay, now we're nearly there. So I'll copy this, come down, paste it. So this part's okay. Now we have an integral of one with respect to x sine x, right? Let's consider this to be the letter y. The integral of one with respect to y is y. So we can replace this with just x sine of x. And now consider this other integral, the integral of sine of x. Now, what's the derivative of cos of x? It's minus sine, right? So, uh, this should be, let's write cos of x. All right, and if we differentiate minus cos of x, well, we get plus sine of x, so we want a plus cos of x. Okay, and now since there are no more integral signs, we can add, or we should add, plus c. Now, look, there's a 2 that has not yet been multiplied throughout, so perhaps we should do that to make this look a little prettier. Okay, so we'll multiply the 2 out, and we can get rid of some brackets. All right, but... This will look even nicer if we factorize out the cos of x. So let's move this cos of x over to the front. Right there. And uh, I want to factorize cos of x out of this expression. Okay, so I put a bracket and then I pull the cos out. And I remove that same cos in, inside the bracket. Okay, so this is the integral complete. Now, let's have a look at what we had to start with. All right, so to start with, I had, I had this, 2x sine of x minus, in brackets, x squared minus 2 times cos of x plus c. Now, that is the exact same expression as this one. We could, if we want, introduce a minus, and then uh, change this into x squared minus 2. All right, so maybe that looks a little nicer, but we get the right answer. Now that we've done it by hand, let's uh, check our, our work by using Mathematica's capabilities. All right, so copy, paste. And now that I've done that, I'll turn all of this into a comment. Okay, now it's a comment, and I can just put this back up here and uh, execute the cell. So press Shift Enter and see what we get. All right, now having done that, uh, we got the first part of this without the plus C. Now it doesn't put the plus C in, but it must go in there when you're calculating this to be as general as possible. Okay, well that's all I have for you for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, tutorial, Mathematica tutorial on calculating the integral of x squared sine of x using integration by parts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.